Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownload Blog, and in this video, I'm very excited to talk about the new iPad Air 5. In this video, I will be going over the very beginner tips and tricks, as well as some more advanced software tips and tricks. We're gonna be looking at the hardware and some of the best accessories available for the iPad to get the most out of it. And if you want to check out specific timestamps, you can check out the bottom of the video where you can go to the exact section of the video that you want. Let's go ahead and get started with the beginner tips and tricks. So this iPad comes in a purple color, a starlight, a space gray, a pink, and then this blue color. And I really do like this blue color this year. You can see how it kind of shifts in the light that can goes from kind of a, a dark purplish gray when it's in a darker environment to when it's facing the light, you can see that it is kind of a pretty vibrant blue. And I do have these cellular antennas up here for the 5G support. Now, just to compare this to the blue from the previous iPad Air, this is the older generation of the iPad Air, and you can see some of those color differences there. You can see it is a bit of a richer blue this year around, and I do like it. I think it looks really nice. So again, on the right, this is the new blue. So now to do a bit of a hardware tour of this iPad. Of course, on the front is your screen and you can tap it to wake it up, or you can also press the power button up top. And of course, you just lay your fingerprint on the iPad and it will unlock just like that. Now we have speakers and microphone at the top of the device. And on the right hand side, you have your volume buttons. And these volume buttons are like the new iPad mini insofar as they will rotate as your device rotates. So the up volume button will always be the right one or the top one, depending on your orientation. So if you have your iPad upside down, it will be the top button to do volume up. Or if you have it right side up, uh, again, it'll be the top button. If you have it on its side, it'll be the right hand button. So the buttons do switch as you rotate your device. So you just always have to use the rightmost or top button depending on which orientation your iPad is. It's a little confusing to get used to at first. Then on the side, you have your magnet for the Apple Pencil so that if you get the Apple Pencil 2 or one of the third party ones that I'll talk about that are cheaper, you can magnetically attach it to the side of your iPad. And at the bottom, you have your charging port, and this is USB Type-C, and then you have a couple more speakers as well. And on the back, you have your 12 megapixel camera, as well as a microphone beneath that. So if you have your iPad unlocked, you swipe up to get home, and you can type in your passcode or use the fingerprint scanner. Now, when you are in an application, again, you just swipe up to go to your home screen, Again, just swipe up, but you can also use multi-touch fingers. You can do four fingers to close an application. Now, if you wanna get back and forth between recent applications, you're going to swipe right and left, just like this, and you can get back and forth between different applications very easily. Now, if you wanna see all of your recent applications, you swipe up like you're going home, but this time you hold a little bit, you give it a little bit of delay, and it will show you your recent applications. There you can go to a recent application. You can also very easily drag two apps on top of each other, and now you have multitasking, and that will create a new multi-window mode, and you can adjust it like this. So again, you swipe up, and if you need to close an application, you can swipe up, and it will force close that application. If you want to get into your quick controls, such as for brightness, Bluetooth, and more, you swipe down from the top right, and there you have your volume, you have your brightness, you have do not disturb, orientation lock, things like that. And if you tap and hold on these, you can expand it and get personal hotspot as well as airdrop. Now, if you wanna customize and add more shortcuts to this control center, you can go into settings and control center, and you can add whatever you want. And there's some really nice ones, such as low power mode if your battery is getting low, or screen recording if you wanna record your screen. Now, if you wanna take a screenshot, you're going to hold down the power button and the top volume button at the same time and there will be a screenshot. And then you can tap on the screenshot and you have several options. You can click the share button right here if you wanna send it to somebody. You can also use Apple's live text photo and you can copy and paste or look up or translate text that is in here. So if you had like a link or an email address, you could screenshot it and then highlight it and copy and paste it. Or you can also click the markup button and there you can use the highlighter to circle something and then share it via an email or whatever the context may be. And then you have the option of clicking done. You can save it or you can delete it. Now, if you wanna power off your iPad, what you do is hold down the top volume button and the power button at the same time for a few seconds. And there it will give you the slide to power off 
option. Now, if your iPad is unresponsive and you need to force restart it, which I don't advise you do often, but if you ever need to, you press the top volume button, the bottom volume button, and then you hold the power button for several seconds until your iPad force restarts. So if it's ever frozen, that's what you can do. When you're on your home screen, of course, you go back and forth between your recent applications. And you also have your app library, which is where all of your apps exist. And you can tap and hold to drag one of these out to one of your home screens, just like that. If you want to add a widget like I have here, again, you tap and hold on your home screen and click the plus button. And there you have a bunch of widgets that you can add, You pick one you like, you tap and hold it, and you bring it to your home screen, just like that. If you don't want a widget or an app, you can hold it and click remove, just like that. Now from your home screen, if you swipe down, you can get into Spotlight, which is a really great tool. And this allows you to search for basically anything. You can search for an app, a contact, a location, a song, anything right from here. It's kind of like a universal search. So this is great if you want to look something up quickly on your device and find it. So now that we've got some beginner tips and tricks out of the way, let's talk accessories. So by default, Apple gives you this 20 watt charger. But as you can see by this power meter, the iPad is actually capable of accepting more than 20 watts of charging power. As you can see, this meter here is fluctuating between 23 and 24 watts, and it can go even higher than that. So you can get a very small, compact, 30 watt charger. I've got a couple here. This one's from Ojai, this one's from Anchor. And these are not only smaller than Apple's, but they charge more quickly. So I love to have these just in my backpack, uh, one of them at a time in my backpack, so I can charge up my iPad at full speed uh, and even more compact. So that's a really great accessory. Now, of course, there's also stylus options, and I have several here. So you can go with the Apple Pencil 2, which is going to run you between $100 and $130, depending on sales. It's amazing. It attaches magnetically, works super well, um, and it charges from your iPad. Has the double tap feature. It's great. If you want to go cheaper, you can get the Logitech Cran. It doesn't have the magnet, doesn't have the double tap feature, uh, doesn't have the automatic charging. You have to plug it in and uses the same type of tip that the Apple Pencil uses as well. So it's going to feel very, very similar. And you can get this between uh, 60 and $70. And I'll leave a link down in the description. Or if you want to go even cheaper, right, this is a $35 one from Panoval. It charges via USB-C. It does add the magnet for attaching to the iPad. It has a very similar writing experience as these two. Uh, but just for 35 bucks. So it is not quite as nice or responsive as the Apple Pencil, but it's basically 90% as good. And I've covered this in a video that you can check out. So these are three great options. If you want to go for the best, go Apple Pencil. If you want to go medium, go Logitech Cran. But honestly, my preference would be either the most expensive or the cheapest. They both have the magnets and they both write really well. And if you do use the Apple Pencil, you can swipe up from the bottom for a quick note or you can screenshot by dragging in from the left-hand corner as well. So that's pretty nice. There's also keyboard cases that you can get for your iPad. Of course, you can get Apple's Magic Keyboard. So this one is fantastic. It has a trackpad and a really good keyboard, and it comes in both black and white. So whichever color you want, that can go with your iPad. And this works super, super well. Um, and it kind of has a floating, levitating effect to the side. The only downside is that it is certainly pretty heavy and pretty thick when you're using it with your iPad, uh, as well as it has the cutout for the iPad Pro. So it looks a little awkward with the iPad Air's camera. But this is a really great keyboard. It's just a little bit expensive. But when I checked yesterday, actually, this white one was on sale on Amazon. Now, if you want a keyboard case from Apple, but you want to save some money and maybe have something that isn't as bulky, they have, instead of the Magic Keyboard, they have the Smart Keyboard Folio. This one is obviously quite thin, right? Um, has the right camera bump, and it folds into two typing positions. Kind of the downside to this is that it obviously doesn't have the trackpad that this one does right here. Uh, and it also has a very different typing experience. This has a much more fabric key feel versus the very nice clicky uh, plastic key feel of the other keyboard case. Now there's also a third option of Logitech's Combo Touch Case, which kind of combines the best of both worlds. So it offers you a protective shell. As you can see, uh, it's kind of a full case. But then you also have a removable keyboard that you can attach to it. And it has a very large trackpad 
a great keyboard and a really nice function row up top and then a kickstand up back. This is a bit bulkier and you can't use the iPad bare. It's always gonna have this case on it, um, but it's really nice if you do wanna go for something a little bit more protective uh, and that has a function row. This is a great option as well from Logitech. Now, if you want something just super slim and minimal, Apple does make their very simple folio. It's basically just two very thin pieces of fabric and it's super slim uh, and nice, but very expensive for what it offers. So it's a, it's a cool case and it gives you a couple stand options as well. So you can put your iPhone, iPad on a stand, uh, but it's very expensive. Now next, in terms of mice and keyboard, you can use any Bluetooth mouse or keyboard with your iPad, or you could use a USB one if you use something like a USB hub and plug it in via the USB port. So you can use something like Apple's Magic Mouse and Magic Keyboard with your iPad. So if you don't wanna use something like the Logitech Combo Touch or Apple's Magic Keyboard case, you can use a separate mouse and keyboard. Now my favorites would probably be Logitech's MX Anywhere 3 mouse or the Logitech Pebble, which is a super compact, really lightweight and really quiet mouse. And you can use any keyboard as well. Again, whether it be Apple's Magic Keyboard or you can use Logitech's Keys to Go, which is a super thin, super portable keyboard. I don't personally love it because I just think that there isn't enough texture and feedback on the keys. I find it a little mushy, but I know a lot of people do like this keyboard, which is super compact and super portable easy to throw in a bag. And finally, like I mentioned before, you can get USB-C hubs. And with this, plug this in. Now you can add USB or SD or even HDMI right to your iPad. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for a couple hubs. You can also just use more simple um, single USB hubs to connect anything you want. So I use this sometimes if I'm connecting um, an SD card, obviously, or a microphone with the USB, and then I can launch voice memos on the iPad and get recording. So next, I wanna go into the software tips and tricks. This is going to be a, a big one. So the first one is a, a huge new feature that Apple brought with iPadOS 15.4 and macOS 12.3. So if you have a Mac running the latest Mac software, you can actually just put your iPad anywhere near your Mac, uh, and you can share a single mouse and keyboard. So you can use your Mac's mouse and keyboard and just drag it off screen, and it'll automatically go to your iPad. I just made a video talking about this feature, so you can check out that for more details. That's a huge new feature with the iPad. So next would be center stage, and this uses the new front-facing camera on your iPad. So you can see, you can get some really nice wide angle shots if you want a wide angle shot. But this also means in different applications such as Zoom or WebEx or FaceTime, you can use center stage so that when you're talking, you can move around the room a little bit and your iPad will follow you. If you go into your control center up top, you can see video effects. And here you can turn center stage on or off as well as portrait mode. So if you're FaceTiming someone, you can turn on portrait mode to blur out the background. Uh, sometimes you don't want center stage if you don't want the camera shifting around. If you have another person to your right or left or just something that you don't want to show in the video, you might want to turn this off so that your iPad doesn't um, automatically shift away from the scene. Now, another really great feature is live text, which I showed you a little bit before. You can screenshot anything and from that you can copy and paste, but also works in things such as photos. So say I have this thumbnail here in the bottom right hand corner, you can see this little live text icon. And from there, you can easily highlight anything. So this is a photo and I can copy this text and I can paste it or I could translate it or speak it or share it or anything like that. So if you have an address on a picture, you can also highlight the address and launch it in your Maps app, things like that. Now one feature that I always turn off, if you go into Touch ID, I turn off password autofill. This means that when Safari tries to automatically fill in a passcode, you don't have to verify it every time with your fingerprint it will just automatically do that. So I like to turn that feature off. Additionally, I would definitely experiment with Do Not Disturb and Focus. There's some really great options that you can do with these different modes, including things such as adjusting what pages and what apps you see on your home screen, depending on which Do Not Disturb or Focus setting you have. And you can click the three little dots to the side of it and customize the settings. You can choose who can contact you, who can't contact you, whether or not you share, you know, whether it shows you notifications at all, stuff like that. So I really do enjoy tinkering with these do not disturb options here. 
Now another cool feature is white noise. So if you go into your control center options and you turn on hearing and then you long press the hearing, you can see background sounds is an option right here and you can turn this on and just have some white noise or dark noise or rain or whatever you want in the background. And this is great for if you're studying or whatever, you can use this right there. Now another great feature in Control Center, if you have the notes toggle and you hold that, you can click scan document and then you can very easily scan a document and share it uh, into the files application or email to somebody or save it to uh, wherever you want, Google, Google Drive, stuff like that. And I made a video talking about that, which you can check out. And finally, multitasking has gotten really good. So when you're in the application, you click the three dots at the top and there you can very easily make it full screen you can make it split screen or you can put it to the side. So let's do split screen. And then I choose another application that I want to open. We'll say Twitter. And just like that, I have two apps side by side. And if I want either of these to go to the side, I can click that. And then I just have an app to the side. Or I can make it full screen. And again, like I showed earlier, you can drag two apps on top of each other to make a side by side just like that. So those are the basic tips and tricks and how to use your iPad Air five. It's a great device. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.